Another threat we face when operating in mountainous regions is the air mass effect known as mountain wave. Mountain wave effects are often responsible for unanticipated clear air turbulence encounters. Understanding the dynamics of a mountain wave will be helpful in anticipating turbulence at cruise flight levels. More importantly, however, this knowledge will help you avoid downdrafts or severe turbulence at lower altitudes while flying in a mountainous environment. Okay, we're going to jump into one more subject. It's going to be a short subject, but we think it fits into this program. The reason we think we need to put it in this program is because of bullet number one. Remember our discussion this morning? I mean, who more than us? Who more than American Airlines flies into deeply embedded mountainous airports all over this planet with regular and high frequency? And the answer is no one. We have the threat. And then bullet number two, every pilot in this room clearly knows that when it's windy in the mountains, it's bumpy. Bullet th three, at lower altitudes, we know we can get updrafts, downdrafts, severe turbulence, and or rotors. And then fourthly, mountain wave activities can reach altitudes well in excess of 40,000 feet, and we've always known that. As we look at this issue generically on a slide, and by the way, I've massaged these slides quite a bit. I didn't know a lot about this subject when I started on this, and I found a lot of people that thought they knew a lot about this, but I finally think I have the three guys in this country that really do understand this. I'm convinced. And what they say is that when the wind approaches a mountain ridge, or a, a, a range of any sort within certain angular limits, you are going to have updrafts on the windward slope, downdrafts on the leeward slope, and then it will revert back into an updraft, and that pattern will be established and continue downwind, even with no downwind terrain it does this. And that particular mountain wave pattern has been known to go downwind as much as 1,200 miles. Underneath the second wave, it is not uncommon to have a rotor. And the rotor doesn't have to be down here. It can be up here in the 30,000s. And this is severe turbulence. And we have, we have recorded history of this in American Airlines three times already this year. And, 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 some, and you don't have to be in or near the mountains necessarily, uh, mentally uh, and, and physically, geographically, to encounter this. As an example, we had one of our flights, January 3rd of this year, en route from Chicago to Stockholm over the Atlantic Ocean. And as fate would have it, I was riding in first class. <laughs> I was not part of the crew. It was clear. And we, were, we had already passed over Greenland. We were headed for some point south of Kef. It was clear. There were stars outside. You know, everything was fine. I was in my computer here updating it for Swedish. <laughs> and uh, um, it started to get rough. And it felt weird. It just didn't feel like normal chop feels, you know? It was just something funny about it. And it was kind of bothering me. And it started getting a little rougher. And the first officers correctly analyzed it the same way, that it was a little strange and it was getting worse. And so they, they called the flight attendant. The seatbelt sign was already on and all that. They called the flight attendants, told them to get seated and put their belts on. And the flight attendants got down and just clicked their belts when everything went down the tube. Bang, we're down. Bang, we're up. Down. People are screaming. It's a mess for about a minute and a half. It wasn't pretty. And I'm going to stop the story right there. But the point here is, the point here is, on analysis two weeks later, with the meteorologists, we found out that that was a mountain wave rotor over the Atlantic Ocean. How did it get there? Well, when we studied it, the winds over the top of the Greenland air ma uh, land mass, you know what Greenland looks like? It starts over here on the bay side, it goes up to 14,000 feet on average, and it goes back to the Atlantic Ocean. The winds over the top of the Greenland landmass that night were in excess of 120 knots. We were precisely the right distance down for that wave formation downwind to hit the rotor, and we did at 33,000 feet, and it beat our brains out. You don't have to be in the Andes, is what I'm saying. Okay, what do we learn about this stuff? Well, it says updrafts and lifts generally exist on the windward side of a mountain range. 
Downdrafts, turbulence, and rotors can exist on the leeward or downwind side of the mountain range. So what? So where there is a choice, we're going to favor the windward slopes. And those of you that fly in the Andes, we have a lot of choices. Likewise, in and out of Vail and Gunnison and Jackson Hole, we have choices when it's visual. Unusual attitudes or demands for maximum performance can evolve rapidly in the mountains. And then this, an escape plan. All of you that are mountain flyers know the plan. It's the same in all mountain flyers' books. We'll do that three-step plan in just a minute. And then this one, and this one cannot be overemphasized, you know. The seatbelt sign. Not only the seatbelt sign, but the flight attendants too. When we're going in and out of a deeply embedded mountainous airport and it's windy, then we have to have everybody down and strapped down whenever we're below 250 in the Andes or below 150 in Central America and the Rockies and the Alps. Our airplanes can take this stuff. They're strong. We can fly through it. We're good aviators. But those passengers are fragile. And this stuff gets real rough sometimes. This one here is a little different. This is called resonance reinforcement. What's different about this is you have downwind terrain. What happens here, the experts say, is we get the updraft on the windward slope and a downdraft on the leeward slope, but then it sees this downwind terrain, and they call this a jump accelerator. And what it does is it bends the second wave steeper, which makes the second wave even higher than the first. It establishes a very strong wave pattern. This wave pattern has been known to go downwind for two thousand miles. This is not a rotor. In this example, a rotor would exist under the third wave. Okay? This is turbulence, and it, they say this is the worst turbulence known to aviation. It is caused by the flow restriction of the jump accelerator. And it ends up right in this arena here. Okay? How many in this room besides me have flown in and out of Santiago, Chile quite a few times? A bunch of you all, right? Great. Well, let's make this Santiago, because Santiago looks a lot like this. Here's the Santiago Airport. It sits in this valley down here at 1,800 feet. A beam the Santiago Airport, the Andes Mountains, go to 23,600 feet. Over here on the ocean side of the Santiago Airport, there's a series of ridges that go up to 12,000 feet. Down there, they call them hills. Okay? It sets up this exact pattern, because those of you who fly down there know the wind blows from the Mendoza side to the Santiago side. And so when it sets up this pattern, it looks just like this, resonance reinforcement. And we got airplanes from American Airlines back and forth to Buenos Aires, got to get down in this valley. Coming down from Miami, got to get down in this valley. Coming down from Dallas, have got to get down in this valley. If you got to get down on this valley and the wind is blowing like this today, which side of this valley would you fly down on your way into the airport? This side or this side? You see, it's obvious, isn't it? If you pick the windward slope, you will have lift and it will be smooth. There's just one problem. It's invisible. So you have to remember, is it windy? Because if it's not, no issue. If it is, which way is it blowing? Knowing that, you can pick the windward slope, both coming and going. Guys in Avianca have some. I gave this course by invitation to Avianca in Bogota. Boy, have they got some examples, stories to tell about this. Suppose you don't have a choice, though. In other words, suppose you're arriving on a star of some sort, you know, and we, we're coming in here somewhere, and then on the star, you know, maybe you turn toward the airport, and because it's broken clouds, you have to stay on that star, and you're coming in on that star, and you get in here someplace, and all of a sudden, you start sinking big time, right? So all that performance stuff starts, maximum power, right? Turn the oil swells off, stow the boards, 15 degrees, all that stuff starts. But in addition to that, the mountain flyers books all say you've got to change what you're doing. And they all have the same three rules, and those of you that are mountain flyers know the rules. They say rule one, turn away from the leeward slope. Turn away from it. Well, which way? Well, rule two says if this is a valley like this and it goes up and closes in a box canyon, and it goes down that way and opens to the ocean, go that way. 
thing. So you start to turn down valley, and this whole time you're sinking, 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 and now you're getting your brains beat out. And then the third rule is the hardest one of all, because the third one says, if there is a windward slope, you must turn toward it. Well, it's hard to roll your lift vector off when you're sinking, but you need to roll it off, because if you'll just move over here, all of a sudden, lifties, lifties, and you're out of there. Guys that have a lot of experience with this will tell you that this is a very powerful effect. In fact, when I was doing this course here in Dallas uh, three and a half months ago, I had one of the pilots in the audience at this point in the program, he just stood up and started talking. So I sat down, you know, and we had a revival meeting in here. <laughs> and what he wanted to share with us is he had been flying C-141s for the Air Force Reserves, part-time, you know, uh, out, and he was down south out of Panama in the Andes, this was this last year. And what happened is uh, he got caught underneath one of these coming out of an Andes airport, you know, the party. And he got caught out of one of these puppies, and it started driving him down, down, down. And it was obvious by his dissertation that he had a near-death experience, <laughs> okay? But what he was trying to share with us was, he said, I wish someone had told me to turn toward the windward slope. Because he stayed behind the leeward slope and almost lost the fight. American Airlines pilots operate in and out of numerous airports and mountainous regions. It's imperative that we maintain our situation awareness throughout each and every flight. We must know precisely where we are at all times when flying below the level of surrounding terrain. Additionally, an understanding of the air mass effects resulting from mountain wave will enhance safety as well as provide a more comfortable ride for our passengers. Fifty, forty, thirty. 